Hey everybody, it's Monday, April 6th, 2020, and today is day number 10 of Mr. Donley Reads. Wow, how did we get to 10 so fast? So we finished up last week by reading The Book With No Pictures by B.J. Novak, and we're going to start this week by reading a book called Maurice the Unbeastly. It's written by Amy Dixon and illustrated by Carl James Mountford. So, let's find out why Maurice is so unbeastly. Maurice the Unbeastly. Maurice was not like the other beasts. His voice was as sweet and refreshing as dandelion lemonade on a hot day. He preferred his snacks green and organic, and he was ridiculously photogenic. Mama and Papa Beast were concerned. Beasts roar, said Mama, and destroy, bellowed Papa. You must learn to be less civilized, Mama said. We are enrolling you at the Abominable Academy for Brutish Beasts. Maurice munched quietly on his kale kebab and mulled this over. He was a beast. He was supposed to be fierce and ugly and gruff. He didn't want to be a gargantuan failure. So he tidied up his room, packed up his alfalfa fritters, and headed off to the Abominable Academy for Brutish Beasts. Our first lesson, growled the headmaster, will be the frightening roar. The beasts responded in a chorus of terrifying shouts, except for Maurice, whose voice rose above the rest in a perfect high A. A note went home to Mama and Papa. Maurice's roar is dreadfully melodious and delightful to the ear. Lesson number two, the headmaster snarled, is messy meat eating. The beasts ripped and ravaged through the meat feast before them, except for Maurice, who placed a napkin in his lap and said, excuse me, please, but is there a vegetarian option? Another note went home to Mama and Papa. Maurice is terribly neat and polite, and we had to com confiscate his alfalfa fritters. Next, said the headmaster, we destroy. Each beast in the room crashed and crushed, wrecked and ruined. Except for Maurice, who dashingly dodged and stylishly sidestepped the mayhem. You're much too light on your feet, the headmaster scolded. Just when Maurice thought it couldn't get any worse, picture day arrived. One by one, the beasts thundered through the line, their hideousness shattering camera lenses. Maurice was determined to get this one right. He growled and scowled. He snarled and howled. The photographer still captured the perfect glamour shot. One last note went home. If Maurice insists on continuing to smile, he will never progress. Maurice was beginning to feel as if the abominable academy for brutish beasts was a gargantuan mistake. Just then, a ruckus erupted in the classroom. An unidentified creature had infiltrated the academy. One beast roared, but the creature just roared right back. Another beast bravely tried to catch it, but she stomped much too slowly. All the beasts quivered and quaked. except for Maurice, who sashayed to the left and flashed his winning smile. Here, creature, creature, he sang. The creature stopped and looked with big eyes at Maurice. Maurice pulled a hidden alfalfa fritter from his pocket and held it out. The other beasts watched in amazement as the creature bounded over to Maurice and curled up in his lap. Teach us this creature magic, the headmaster said. And so Maurice was named the official creature whisperer of the abominable academy for brutish beasts. He was a gargantuan success. His paper, Coaxing Creatures 101, 
Using the beast's softer side, won first prize in the school essay contest. He led a campaign to add kale to the lunch menu, and he started the Academy's first a cappella group, the Bar Baritones. Maurice was definitely not like the other beasts. And thank goodness for that. The end. That was Maurice the Unbeastly, written by Amy Dixon and illustrated by Carl James Mountford. Teaches a great story about how you don't have to be like everybody else. So, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.